So I'll be talking today about New Nigeria, New Africa. There's an urgent need to reflect on the state of Nigeria and a just as urgent need to map a way forward. I'm about to make obvious statements, but there is a need to say them again. The black man is under threat worldwide. In the meantime, he messes up his homeland and foolishly seeks a good life abroad. Who really enjoys having his home marauded by outsiders? A guest every now and then is fine, but not a continuous occupation by guests. COVID-19 has laid bare Africa's unpreparedness as a continent to stand up to emergencies. The basics are missing. There never were schools, so a shutdown is of little consequence. Online schooling, pull the other one. Hospitals, jokes, all of them. Simple instructions to stay at home have now become the stuff of dictionary checks. Kano, Sokoto, and others permitted worship for Eid El Fitri. Perhaps it's a case of kill yourself if you want to, but please spare others. Christian organizations, churches, if you may, push to reopen. Personally, I shall be pleased for another year of shutdown for them. They need reorganization. The Nigerian church must be dragged screaming into the 21st century, and I suspect same for Islam. It is time once again to advocate a mindset change. I will continue to do this under a different guise each time. We need to change. Not that one of APC, but true change. Nigeria and Africa must rise again. Economic prosperity will come for us when we buckle down and embrace honesty, sincerity, and technology, and stay back at home to rebuild. To disturb Bob Marley a bit, chase those crazy idiots out of this town. You know who I'm talking about. Do we know, do we know who you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, there are a lot of people, not just one person. Oh, okay. Uh, it's not in, it's not in the singular. I, yes. I think for me, it's, it's uh, and thank you, Chuka, for this advocacy, because I think it just it kind of flows into um, um, the, my own topic early on. Um, clearly, um, there is a need for us to, to imagine a new country. You know, it's, it's, it's to imagine it. We've been living with an imagination of the British for the last hundred years. This is how they imagine Nigeria. We as Nigerians, it is time for us to imagine a new country, you know, visually imagine it and walk towards it. You know, for either from the social political side and from the economic side, how do we build industries? How do we build clusters of knowledge here? We need to pursue that imagination. You know, and find the people, the right people, whether they're here in Nigeria or outside of Nigeria, who are Nigerians who share in, in, in our belief, and be more open. You know, we, we've sort of, you know, um, will I say delegated or subjugated everything to the concept of in God, that God will do it for us, you know, some higher power. And countries that have made that jump to, to do well have done it not, not because God was absent, but because they chose deliberately to work for it. And we are not doing the work, in, the, in, the, in, in my view, at this time. And I think that's what we need to do. Okay, um, I mean, I, and, and, and so the question of mindset and all of that, it's all part of it. But the, the type of leadership we, we must have now, the people who want to lead us, most people who have demonstrated capacity to, to create that kind of vision. Okay. And, and to take it from there, but also to go back to the, the, the mindset thing, um, what always jumps out at me when people are talking about mindset is that you need people to be educated, or at least to be taught to think. You know, yesterday, uh, one of, recently, we're looking at uh, Children's Day, and um, I was impressed with some of the, the ways the children expressed themselves. You could see that they were used to being challenged to solve problems, but you could also see the children who were not used to that, and they were just regurgitating. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't come automatically. To engage your brain doesn't come automatically. You don't even have to be educated as per you know, in a classroom. You can just be taught to engage your brain to solve problems, um, and it shows. So uh, what I sort of thought about when, I, when you were talking was uh, I was thinking about my dad's generation, and one of the things that pleased me most about that generation is that they had scholarships. My dad, you know, the background wasn't well to do, but for the scholarship, and he was able to get into a school that didn't just give him an education because he was telling me about it, and we're chronicling it together. 
It gave him an environment where he could imagine. He played things like cricket. He did drama shows. So his whole world, okay. he could compete with people from any walk of life. This so he, he was able to transpose himself from a background of a poor man to the background where he could compete this with anybody on any scale. This is new Nigeria is That's what I'm saying. So, I, I, and he was, so it was, there was, challenged. there was a capacity. full stop. I'm coming now, but there was a capacity for him to then be upwardly mobile. One of the frustrations I have with Nigeria is that the only way you're going to upwardly mobile yourself or, or mobilize yourself out of poverty. Either you're a thug or a politician. Not Nigeria, some say not, the don't the use the word Nigeria as the rulership. Well, I don't rulership. know. Like, the system is now making oh, it such that well, you're not an entertainer. Have, that makes up Wait, the now, let me, let, me, let me express myself so even I'm clear what I'm saying. If the system is rigged against being able to imagine yourself out of poverty, except you start trying to think of thuggery or political, um, you know, thuggery, another form of it, or celebrity status. So we need to make, create an environment that rewards merit-based, you know, investing in people who can then invest in themselves. As, as it is now, I can't really see hope for a young person who is not well-to-do coming out. Back to the point. Yeah. The point is, yes, a new Nigeria is possible, but 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, I don't see it. Do you know why? Because those things, there are foundation. You just talked about the foundation. Education. Those things that will enable a new Nigeria is not there at all. Chuka talks about churches, mosques, all the same thing. Everybody's bidding its time to get the cookie jar. And so, no leadership anywhere. We all have rulership. And so, with all of that, nobody's laying the right foundation. Recently in the UK, you saw them, you know, um, co-opts about two, 200 youths into um, Labour Party to build the next generation leadership. And they start from there. So the next generation, the, when you start hearing names, they didn't just spring up to say, oh, I have been told, I've just been identified because I talk so much on TV. I've just been identified to come and be. They have taught that person through a process. But here, what are we doing? We are not teaching anybody. As public schools, you can't call schools. Chuka talked about it. The churches are not teaching anybody anything. Our mosques are not teaching anybody anything. And so, what do you have? What role model are we building? Nothing. Apart from Malologede, Malologede, Chobanana, Yugoyo. So, that's what you <laughs> see now. That's what, even, that's what attracts. No leadership, no role model. And the likes of... Um, Laji La La Latif, Jaconde, uh, Bisio, Nobanjo, and all of those people. They had role models. They had leaders that they could model after. And after that, nothing. Everything stopped. All people wanted was join military, become a, a military administrator. And then when that stopped, now join Togri and become a politician. a politician. We must now begin to challenge anybody that comes, wants to contest for political office. What plans do you have for health, education, education um, industrialization, and all of that? And if we look through them and find that it doesn't suit what a modern society needs, you jettison that person. I think that one unique opportunity that common education gives us that we've not utilized is the capacity to be able to create a certain way of thinking. You know, and some, you know, if you look at it, if you look at even countries, and I'm looking at Western countries. I'm also looking at even Asian But if you look at countries like the United States, for example, once you go through the education system, you come out with a general mindset about basic understanding of certain values, certain issues. If you look at countries like China, China it's the same thing. Some people may say it's brainwashing. But that's not what it is. It's that if we use our system of formal education well, will have a common... One of the things that you find that is very unusual about us here is that people don't even have a general, basic, um, common view about a lot of things. And that's because our formal system of education is failing. And if you look back to our parents' generation and the generation before this, I think that was what was different about um, the system of education. So I think it's one of the things that we really need to look into. And very quickly, so if we start today, a child that is five years old, in another 15 years would have actually finished university. So it's just, it's not going to take that long to change a whole generation. We just need to decide that that's what we want to do. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Chuka speaks the, of a mindset change, and so do I. After the break, stick around. <laughs>